This is the Skoda Enyaq, and it's a bit like a Volkswagen ID4, only better. In this video, I'm going to be telling you exactly why that is, and I'll also be running you through some of the really cool features on this car, including this, 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 and this. But before we get started, do make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you've switched on notifications. And if you're looking to buy a new electric car, head over to whatcar.com. We've got some great deals at the moment, including more than £4,000 off a Jaguar I-Pace, and you can save over £7,000 on an Audi e-tron. Now, although the Enyaq is Skoda's first dedicated fully electric production car, the Czech brand does have a history of dabbling in EVs. Most recently, there was the Citygo E, which was originally a petrol-powered city car, but a few thousand electric versions were built towards the end of its life. And back in the 1990s, around 100 Skoda Favorites were converted to electric and sold in parts of Europe. Going back even further than that, Skoda had a fleet of electric trucks delivering beer to pubs in Pilsen in the 1930s. Now, the Enyaq is fairly obviously an SUV, and it's a reasonably big one, actually. It's about 4.6 metres long and 1.9 metres wide, so roughly the same sort of size as an Audi Q5. And with that in mind, the starting price of 34,495 seems a bit of a bargain. That's actually slightly less than you'll pay for a 64 kilowatt hour version of the Kia e Nero, which is a very good electric car, but a lot smaller than this. And it also means that the Enyaq qualifies for a two and a half thousand pound grant from the government. Until recently, that grant was three thousand pounds and you could get it on cars up to 50,000, but it's now been cut to two and a half thousand and only applies to cars under 35K. And that means that the starting price that you'll actually pay for the Enyaq is as little as 31,995, less than VW's ID3, which is again, a smaller car than this. In fact, as I alluded to right at the start of this video, the Enyaq is very similar underneath to the ID4. The ID4 at the moment costs just over £40,000. Cheaper versions are on the way, but they'll still cost more than this. The bad news is that if you want the government grant and that really attractive price, you have to go for the smaller of two battery options. So there's a 58 kilowatt hour battery, that's in the 60 version that we're driving today, and then there's a 77 kilowatt hour battery in the 80 model. The difference mainly comes down to range. The 60 can officially do 256 miles on a full charge, and the 80 version can do 333 miles. We'll talk about real world range a bit later on. If you want the larger battery and that promise of an extra 77 miles on a full charge, and who wouldn't, you'll be spending nearly 39,000. So that's quite a big difference. Although even then, the Enyaq is a fair bit cheaper than any Mustang Mach-E, Tesla Model 3, or Polestar 2. But apart from a battery and an electric motor, what do you get for that money? Well, even the cheapest versions are pretty well equipped, actually. You get dual zone climate control, a 13-inch touchscreen, rear parking sensors, ambient interior lighting, and you also get 19-inch alloys. This car has optional 20-inch wheels. You can actually have 21s, the biggest fitted to any Skoda. They are quite expensive, but a bit of a loophole here. Any options you add to the Enyaq that take the price above £35,000 won't rule you out of getting the government grant. So that's something worth thinking carefully about. It isn't available in the UK until later in the year, but you will soon be able to have your Enyaq with a crystal face. It's essentially 130 LEDs arranged in vertical strips down here with a single bar going across the middle there. And I think it looks pretty cool. You can charge your Enyaq at home, of course, using a regular wall box and this Type 2 charging cable that you get as standard. You can also charge at rates of up to 50 kilowatts using public CCS chargers. And if you want to charge up even quicker than that, you'll need to fork up £440 extra. That'll get you rates of up to 100 kilowatts on this 60 version and 125 on the 80. You can choose from five different interior designs. We're in the cheapest loft version here, and that comes with this quite smart looking fabric on the dashboard and some more of it on the insides of the doors here as well. The poshest trim levels, Sweet and Eco Sweet, they come with leather, some contrast stitching, and some piano black detailing as well. The main difference there is that the cognac leather in the Eco Sweet is sustainably sourced, and rather than treated with chemicals, it's also been rubbed with olive leaf extract. So there you go. If you go for lodge trim, then the seat covers are made from 40% new wool, and because of that, they are wool mark certified, whatever that means. But what I can tell you is that whichever Enyaq you go for, then the interior feels really well put together. 
It's nice and solid. You've got some squidgy plastics up here on the dashboard and tops of the doors as well. And the leather on the steering wheel feels really fine grain as well. Whichever trim you go for, you get this enormous 13 inch touchscreen as well. As you'd expect from any brand new car, you get a DAB radio, an Apple CarPlay, an Android Auto smartphone mirroring. And it's pretty easy to use actually. Because it's so big, the icons are huge. So you don't have to strain your eyes too hard to find the one you want when you're driving. So that's not too distracting. The slightly annoying thing is that you do have to use the screen to adjust the aircon. There are no physical buttons and dials down here. We would prefer those. But again, because the screen is so big, the controls are permanently on offer at the bottom of the screen here. So they aren't too difficult to find. The driving position, really good. Lots of adjustment. This car has an electric driver's seat. That comes as part of the comfort seat package, but you do get adjustable lumbar support as standard. It's just manual rather than electrically operated. Only a couple of criticisms really. Firstly, these seats, they don't have a huge amount of side support. And because the dashboard is quite high and these pillars here fairly chunky, visibility when you're coming up to junction roundabouts isn't perfect, but you do get a really good view of the virtual cockpit digital instruments behind the steering wheel. Storage space, is absolutely brilliant though. There's a huge cubby under the central armrest here and another big tray below the floating center console here that's handy for throwing a wallet. There are a couple of cup holders, two wireless phone charging pads here and another tray for, I don't know, a mask or whatever else you want to throw there. The door bins also absolutely massive, plenty big enough for a bottle of water this size. And because they're flock lined, it means things don't rattle around when you're driving along. So that's very nice. Loads of space is a bit of a theme in the Enyaq actually, because the driving position, that's set up for me. I'm just over six foot. And look, I've still got a good six inches of knee room there and absolutely loads of headroom. And if you come around to the boot, well, that's absolutely huge as well. Look, loads of space in here. This car has the optional transport pack that brings a height adjustable boot floor and these levers here for remotely folding down the rear seat. You also get some netting as well. There is actually loads of space under the floor as well, good for several charging cables. So overall, at least at this price point, no other electric SUV comes close for practicality. Now, apart from range, the smaller battery 60 version that I'm driving here actually has slightly less power as well. It has 177 brake horsepower, the 80 has 201. But on paper, at least, there isn't much in it for performance at all. This car, that can do 0 62 in 8.7 seconds, the 80 can do it in eight and a half. So really, by electric car standards, neither is particularly quick. But if you compare it to petrol or diesel alternatives at this sort of money, then acceleration is more than adequate. This is a car that doesn't feel out of depth on any type of road. And actually, because of the immediacy of the power delivery that you get in all electric cars, it feels quicker than those times suggest, certainly at low speeds. If you're looking for something a little bit quicker than the Mustang Mach-E, that will do 0 60 in well under seven seconds. And obviously if you spend a bit more money than that, you can get yourself into a Tesla Model 3, which is crazy quick. Now these paddles here behind the steering wheel, they come as standard if you go for the 80 version, they cost extra on the 60, they're part of the drive pack. And what they allow you to do is to change the level of regen very easily while you're going along. So regen is short for regenerative braking, and it's something that all electric cars have. And it just means that the energy that would otherwise be lost as you slow down is fed back into the battery. But I've been driving this car for quite a while now and I haven't really bothered using them at all. And that's because you get predictive regen, a standard like you do on a lot of VW Group electric cars. And that works really well, actually. So it just means when you're coming up to a roundabout, the car knows and it increases the level of regen. It also means that if you're traveling close to a car in front and that car slows down, then it will increase the level of regen to just slow you down so you don't have to use the brake pedal. Now it's very quiet. All electric cars, of course, have the advantage that they've got no combustion engine clattering away under the bonnet, but there's not much road noise. In fact, the only thing you really do hear is the suspension working away, particularly on quite bumpy roads. But overall, particularly on the motorway, this is a very quiet car. We'd say ride comfort is roughly on a par with the ID4. Both cars 
very similar underneath as I mentioned a bit earlier as well. And certainly far, far better than in a Mustang Mach-E. That car has a pretty poorly controlled ride, to be brutally honest with you. In other respects, the Enyaq is very easy and relaxing to drive. It isn't a car that encourages you to go quickly, and if you try to, it won't reward you very much, but that isn't to say it feels like a boat through the corners. As long as you aren't being overzealous, it stays fairly upright, and it's also easy to maneuver at low speeds thanks to a really tight turning circle. On a test route of around 17 miles, which included a mix of motorway, country road, and town driving, our Enyaq claimed to be averaging 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Based on that, the real world range should be around 185 miles, although it was pretty cold on the day of our test with temperature hovering around five degrees. Expect to get more than 200 miles quite easily in the summer months. But here are five more things you might want to know about the Skoda Enyaq. The Enyaq is named after an Irish singer. Well, sort of anyway. It's derived from the name Enya, which means source of life. The Q, well, that's just tacked on the end, so there's a connection with Skoda's other SUVs, the Kamik, Karok, and Kodiak. The Enyaq is available with a host of features Skoda calls simply clever. These include an ice scraper in the boot lid, an umbrella in the front passenger door, storage for the tonneau cover under the boot floor, a sleep package with extra soft rear headrests, and even a cleaning tool for the charging cable. There's a mobile app for the Enyaq that lets you remotely check how much charge is in the battery, set when you'd like charging to start and end, and also precondition the interior so it's nice and warm before you get inside. The optional heat pump can warm the battery to improve range in cooler conditions. Skoda claims you can get up to 30% further in temperatures as low as minus 25. It is quite pricey though, it costs just over a thousand pounds. If you like the sound of the Enyaq but want something a little faster, you'll be pleased to know a hot VRS version is on the way. It'll be four wheel drive with a second motor driving the front wheels and it will be able to do 0-60 in around about six seconds. We think the Enyaq is something of a bargain, especially the smaller battery 60 version when you factor in the government grant. Yes, the Kia e-Niro and Hyundai Kona can do more miles on a charge, but they're much smaller cars. If you need the extra range that the 80 version offers, it's a much closer call with the closely related VW ID4, but even then, the Enyaq wins the value argument, and it's certainly a better buy than the Mustang Mach-E. But for lots more information about the Enyaq, head over to whatcar.com and read our detailed 16-point review. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and leave us a comment. And don't forget to subscribe so that we can let you know about some of the really cool videos we've got coming up over the next few weeks.